Okay, we're back again, and it gets a little complicated. I'll try to still talk you through the basics. I, I don't have all the answers yet. I'm still working through them. But you guys are working through them also. Therefore, this might become relevant. By the way, in the video description now, just this page is in a PDF. The links, you know, at the top of the page will not work, but at least you can, you know, download the PDF version of just this page 134 um, of the Ephesians 1 doc. I have not uploaded the a whole revised doc yet. Where we left off in um, segment 7 was I was going to cover what this was. Okay, year 1070 from David's birth. Okay, the Lord was supposed to die on a schedule as you probably know by now. David retired. He did not die at age 70. He retired. But the scholars are having a brain fart in thinking that David died when he was age 70 because they're looking at Josephus rather than the Bible. The Bible makes it clear that David was age 77 and in fact was would have been age 80 when the temple started construction in 1 Kings 6.1. But the so-called scholars, instead of looking at the Bible to see how it delineates the time after David's retirement, which begins at 1 Kings 1, okay, that's when David retired. He lives seven more years, and then there, three years after his death, Shimei is executed, and then Solomon starts the temple. Okay, the fourth year of Solomon after David's death is what the Hebrew clearly means in the context from 1 Kings 1 forward. And Shimei's death is in 1 Kings um, 2.39. And you're supposed to cross-reference that with 1 Chronicles, which, which Jeremiah wrote. Okay, retelling the same story. And Jeremiah fills in the details about what David did after his retirement with respect to the temple. That's in 1 Chronicles 22 to the end of the book of 1 Chronicles. Okay, so the scholars aren't noticing that, so they think David died at 70. Josephus was completely confused, which you can understand, because he had been a general of the Jews, and they were fighting at Masada. He got captured. And then he turned pro-Roman, and that's why he wrote Antiquities and Wars of the Jews to sort of, you know, make nice with uh, Titus. And so he's all confused in his numbers. Almost all of his numbers regarding Jewish history and history to Adam are wrong. Okay? And he's writing to cater to an audience to make Titus like the Jews. All right, so you can't use Josephus. All right, I don't, you know, why is the Bible persona non grata here? The Bible says that David retired at 70. Very clearly says that. Okay, so 1070 from David's birth, the Lord dies. That's the thousandth anniversary of David's retirement. That's when the Lord actually dies. 4136 from Adam. From Adam's fall. Okay? David reigned 33 years over all Israel. The Lord is age 33 when he dies. That's a parallel. Mirroring is the big deal in the Bible. It's an idea of ransom, restitution, redeeming the time. See, it's a mirror. Here it was a mirror. I call it mirroring in my mirroring.htm. That's what God is doing, and that's what Paul is doing, as you're going to see. I've obviously, you know, changed the the color coding here because I want to show that Paul is is making an analogy. He's doing it his own mirroring. Okay, but first we got to get these basics. The Lord died a thousand years, okay, a thousand years after David's retirement. David retired at age 70. He died at age 77. So the Lord is 33, just as David at retirement had ruled 33 years over all Israel, which is in 1 Kings 1 and 2. 
All right. The year the Lord died is exactly to the day. Three times 490 years from the day of the Exodus, which was 430 years to the day from when Jacob entered the land. David being born 430 years, maybe to the day, maybe not, I don't know, after the Exodus. Somewhere in the Bible it's going to tell us when David was born, when he was crowned, okay? But it's going to use wordplay to do that because those would be well-known dates. For example, if I say Christmas, everybody knows that's December 25th. I do not have to say December 25th. I'm going to use some other name for it because it's so well known. So something like that's going on with David's kingship dates. I'll find it. I just don't know where it is yet. Same thing for the, you know, Hanukkah is, is 24 Kislev, which is in, you know, Haggai 2. And there, you don't have to say Hanukkah, which didn't exist yet when God is talking to Zerubbabel. But anybody looking at that date in Haggai 2 would know it would become Hanukkah. You see? The Bible isn't going to just use simple words all the time. That would be boring. So it uses clever titles, clever dates. And that's what's going on here with David. I just don't know what date it is. And unfortunately, nobody bothered to preserve the dates. Okay? So, you know, you have to dig in Bible now because the so-called sages didn't bother to introduce that. <coughs> or if they did, I don't know where it is. I've been looking in the Talmud and elsewhere to see if anybody Jewish bothered to say when this was. A lot of guesswork in Judaism about when David became king, when he was born. Some saying 4th of July because that's an American date. No. It won't be based on American dates. It'll be based on Jewish dates. But, you know, everybody speculates. But the Bible's going to say something, because this is obviously God is reconciling time here. Okay? So, the Lord died at age 33 in the thousandth anniversary of David's retirement when David would have been 70. That is exactly 490 times 3 to the day of the Exodus. So the Lord died on the 1470th anniversary of the Exodus to the very day. Now, that's temple year 980. Temple construction year was 10 years prior when it began construction. Okay? So then that begs the question, well, what happens next? Year 1000 from David's death is 1077. This is where we start getting into Paul's hickey with the 1077s. Okay, that's year 1077 from his birth. That's 4143 from Adam's fall. That's temple year from dedication, 987. 994, this is really important. 994 is seven years later. 997 is 10 years later, I mean, you know, 10 years higher, because the temple foundation is 10 years earlier. Okay? So this is death to death. I, I know there are more parallels I'm telling you, but, I, you know, there are only so many I can cover on one page. In fact, this listing now goes all the way down to seven years past the end of the millennium. Because Paul's reconciling to that, too. <clears throat> I have to play with it more to know all the hubs. But these are as many as I've got to keep it on one page. Okay, so year 1000 from David's death is 4143 from Adam's fall. Now, the Lord should have died then. This is the end point in Daniel 9.26, the 62 weeks and here okay seven years later remember we started out being seven years late up here with Noah that lateness continues all the way through first temple dedication see Jacob is born seven years late 
The temple is dedicated seven years late. My question is why is it seven years late? Because it didn't have to be. Okay? David died on time. If Solomon had started construction when David died, okay, see? A thousand years from David's death is 4143, which means that he died in 3143. So if Solomon had begun the construction of the temple in 3143, by 3150 it would have been done. Why didn't he dedicate it in 3150? Then the time would have been made up. This lateness, see, the, the civilization year ending is 3150 from Adam. Solomon could have, could have started temple construction the very year David died. That would fulfill what God said to David in 2 Samuel 7. Hi, the temple's not going to be built during your life. Okay, fine. But he died in time. 3143 from Adam's fall. But Solomon doesn't build the temple starting when David died. He waits three years, that's 1 Kings 6, 1, before he even starts to build. And then he waits another three years before he dedicates it. So he's seven years late in dedicating it. Why? Is it because he was, you know, out of fellowship with God? Or did God tell him to wait? That's really important to know. And I don't know the answer. It's got to be in the Bible somewhere. Now, when you look at the story with Solomon, you have to look at the, the text in both the Greek and the Hebrew, okay, and, and both Chronicles passage and 1 Kings on this. Because there's extra detail in the LXX that is not in the Hebrew text. And it all meshes together. It all fits together. But you have to read it all. So obviously we lost some of the Hebrew text. You know, the Hebrew text we got now is not the Hebrew text that the LXX writers had. Because they had extra information. Or maybe they filled it in because that information was well known and did not have to be said in the Hebrew text. Because everybody already knew it. All right, so take your pick as to why the LXX has more text in it. But you do need both of those passages to see it. Okay, so again, year 1000 from David's death is year 1077 from his birth. That's 4143, the outer limit of time in Daniel 926. The Lord's age at death, therefore, should have been 40. Therefore, he would have been alive as long as David had been king at all. And actually, it also tallies David had been, you know, not officially, but, you know, from age 70 to 77 is an extra seven years. Okay, so even though he was, he, he retires at 70, so he was totally king, you know, total addition of time was 40 years, seven at Hebron. But by the time he dies at 77, he would have been 40, 40 years king over all Israel, too. Even though his son Solomon was officially in his place. Okay? Because the, the old king hadn't died yet, so you can still count his... Him, you know, he still has the title of king, just like a president. After he's officially stopped being president, there's a new president. But we still call Reagan President Reagan, even though after, you know, after he retired, we still call him President Reagan. All right, it's it's an honorary title after his official term has ended, but it's still true. He was president, and the title sticks. Same thing could be said of da of David here. So there's a parallel again, a mirroring, and that's really important because Paul's meter throughout Ephesians one three through fourteen, he's he's picking his meter based on mirroring, and he ba he's picking his start place in particular here based on mirroring. See, 17 years before Paul writes is this date. Now Paul's picking age 56. Okay, when Paul actually does it, he's picking age 56 right here. Paul picks when he writes. That's his date line. That's the first time his meter is seven. That's where Mary leaves off in the Magnificat. And when, you know, I've 
I didn't learn about the Magnificat until after learning about Paul. And when I saw Paul pick 56, I'm like, why? Why pick 56? And then, of course, you know, 56 plus 434 syllables in the whole thing, plus another 56 equals 490. Okay, it's poetic. Mirroring, you know, equidistance, 56 at the beginning, 56 at the end. Okay, I thought, oh, that's cute. All right. But that's not why he did it. It's not the only reason why he did it. Mary, when she first finds out she's pregnant, she's talking to Elizabeth. Elizabeth informs her she's pregnant. Whether she already knew when Elizabeth told her or not, I don't know. Maybe Elizabeth was giving her the news, you know, because John was going to be the herald of Christ. So Elizabeth's informing her, who knows. Um, but Mary launches immediately into a metered Magnificat, which means all these Jews learned this stuff with the meter when they were kids. Just like we'd say, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In 1494, he landed and he went ashore, or however that nursery rhyme really went. But see, we call nursery rhymes. We learn those as kids in order to remember dates. Well, they had a little more sophisticated method of doing that. They used this meter I'm showing. Okay, so Paul is picking up where Mary leaves off right here. 56? Well, that's the beginning of your 57th year, okay? So, he's benchmarking that. So did Mary. I still don't know why. I only know that that's what their math shows. Mary stops at the Lord's age 56. She's pregnantly tying to Daniel when she does that because Daniel's using the 56 very prominently in his meter. Okay? He's using the 56 to petition the Lord to restore the temple. 56 equals the 49 years that they were out, you know, due to Rao Bone forward, missing the sabbatical years. But during that 49 years, an extra seven years elapsed. So that's why you have the hanging chat of the extra seven. There are 14 years in abeyance by the time Daniel prays, not just seven. The seven years we've seen being a problem here, still here, still here when Solomon could have done something about it, okay? Still here, which I haven't really covered much, see? And that's up here, all right? still in abeyance here. There's this constant, see? David even having the extra seven years, and then of course you had the extra seven years, but it got made up by this point. David had extra seven years because the seven years of, of um, uh, civil war between his crowning at Hebron versus being crowned king over all Israel. That's in 2 Samuel 5. All right, but it's made up here. God killed him on time. He gave him an extra seven years, and he still died on time. All right, so what's the story? So we're only seven years late by the time um, the temple goes down. But the temple's going down is going to add another seven years to the mix. And that's the problem we got. So Paul is playing on 14 next, but he first plays on 17 because that plays on 56. And Mary knew that. So Paul is writing to tag Mary's end, just like all the Bible writers do. You know, the whole thing started Act 1 with Psalm 90, 350 syllables, ending pregnantly at 1050 years before Christ would be born. Then Isaiah comes in, picks up at first David, the last David, to tell you how that 1050 years is going to transpire. Except now it's 1077, which is why Paul's using 1077. First David, the last David. You know, Moses had stopped at 1050 BC. So, you know, there's 10 years in ellipsis. And then Isaiah 53 picks up at 1040 BC when David's born and runs you all the way to the scheduled death of Messiah at what we would call 4143 from Adam's fall. That's 1077 syllables with two sets of syllables held in ellipses, which I've told you about before. Okay, Mary knew all that. 
But Mary takes it 17 years farther. 16 years. 16, 17. Remember, your 56th birthday, that's divisible by 7. That's why they use 56. And that also plays on the missed sabbatical years. The 56th year, the year you turn 56 is, the, is your 57th year. The day you turn 56, that your 57th year has begun. That's the play that's being used. Okay, and that's why they use 57 in the Mosaic Law, Pentecost, plus Passion Week, Passover to you, <clears throat> is 57. That's the, the play that's going on. See, they're very clever with their numbers. So Paul is bracketing this by picking, to piggyback on Mary, and Mary had done the same thing. So he's bracketing 17 years prior and then he's bracketing 17 years after okay to show a mirroring I'm not sure all of why he's doing that I only know that he's doing it <coughs> okay so next up we have the Lord age 43 at 41 46 from Adam that's 14 years before Paul writes and of course you can understand why okay that's the famous, you know, 14 years. He's showing how the 14 gets done. That's temple year 1000, measured from the foundation. Remember, seven years to build the temple. You see how pregnant this is? That's also year 1050 from David's Hebron kingship. Year 1043 from his united kingship. Okay? 14 years before Paul writes, Paul's bracketing it. 14 years after Paul writes is 1077 from David's Hebron kingship. That's 4173 from Adam's fall. Temple year 1017. Temple year from foundation 1027. It's 14 years after Paul writes. And get this, 1077 years from this point is 5250 the end of the millennium he's showing another equidistance I'll pick up again covering more on this later in the next 